All right, it's 2021, and I'm just gonna give a quick garden tour as an update. So this is the garden, and it is a beautiful, beautiful morning here. It's finally, the humidity has finally dropped here in the Northeast, and uh, there's some 70 degree days. So what changes have I done this year for this garden? Well, a lot, I guess. Um, added a propagation greenhouse um, for my uh, spring, for my spring uh, seeds. I'll just pan around real quick. You can see the path. I'm actually using my cell phone, so I hope this works out. There's some echinacea. You can see the bees are just all over this thing. You can hear people battling their grass in the distance. The industrial fleet that they've uh, armed themselves with to cut grass blades. And uh, this is a wall of figs. Some of them are in ground, and some of them are not. A lot of these are in pots. These are all different varieties. This is one of my favorites back here. This is a great fig, and it's very common, easy to get. This fig is called the Violet de Bordeaux. This is a French fig. And boy, is it delicious. This fig here is called a Taramo Unknown. Oh no, actually, that's a Violet Sapor, actually. This fig in the ground here was destroyed by wildlife last year. This is a, I believe that's a Danny's Delight, which is the Mount Etna variety. If you're in the Northeast, cold areas, Mount Etna varieties will give you fruit late August, early September famous hardy Chicago which is a great fig here you can see I think this is a braver right here it looks like it's on last year's wood but I'm not sure that actually is last year's wood um, that is uh, a honey fig called an isbat anange a violet de Bordeaux is a Bordeaux type of fig it has a very very wine flavor to it and they are wonderful your berry figs, your honey figs, your sugar figs, and then subcategories of those. This is the hardy Chicago, which is getting pretty tall. The in-ground trees, I winter protect them. I don't wrap them in burlap. All that does is your tree, your tree will overwinter, but it'll form a lot of mold. I use um, these things called uh, fig hats, and I don't know if I have any out here, but they're PVC barrels that are lined with insulation and they kind of just fit over the tree oh there's my cat here this is Rucker Rucker come here hi honey he's outside enjoying the day here this tree what is that oh that's an MBVS sort of a sister tree to a hardy Chicago. That's an Italian pear. This is a Mefli plum that is completely devoured by birds. I don't want to say I'm that happy to give back to the birds, but I'm not losing any sleep over it. You can see peach roses growing up there by the pizza oven. That is my original Peter's honey fig that came back from the dead. This is my Laterula Italian honey. This is a seven year old fig tree in ground. Isn't that a beautiful tree? Here is my wall of wisteria. I'll try to put a thumbnail of the wisteria when it's in flower in June in the, um, in the comments. It's just, not the comments, but the thumbnail. Because it is, it is beautiful when that that arbor is in bloom. Here's an Asian pear that I let 
fruit too young. And this is what happens when you let fruit trees fruit too young. The branches get uh, weighted down and they can break and then the tree doesn't put on enough growth. These are currants which are no longer in bloom but I have white currants and red currants and currants are great especially as they get a little older they um they lose a bit of their astringency as they mature and they start to get really sweet. I'm a fan of currants. I like currants. My all-time favorite Verona castrum. I used to have a giant peach tree there, but I removed it. I had a borer, and my peach trees were bleeding, so it just wasn't worth it. Oh, that's a pers um, what is that? That's a oh, that's another Asian pear I planted right there, and I planted a lot of young persimmons along this area here, as you can see. But these guys are so young. These are um, hybrid American and Asian persimmons. I got a persimmon there, persimmon there. What are the varieties? Did I leave the tags on? Okay, here, let's see. What variety do we have here? Oh yeah, that's a that's a Rosianca. Did I say it there? Yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, Rosianca. And that'll do well here in Zone 6, Connecticut, New England. So, I'm gonna move things along here. Where should I go first? I'm gonna go this way. This, is a very, this was a very boxy plot. The yard was very rectangular and square, so I tried to really um, give it some dynamic features, you know, create sort of these bends and these curves so you're not looking at uh, just a big square box. People have these giant yards and it's like, for what, for what, you know? I don't need to tell you that they're pouring toxic stuff all over them that's probably making your family sick. They probably should stop doing that. And they, for some reason, culturally feel entitled to do so. As if it's a right of home ownership to pollute. This is a four-in-one apple. All kinds of apples. I think those are pristines right there, which is great because I took out the pristine apple I had, replaced it with another pristine apple. It was the original one I had was a box store apple. There's Lola the cat up there hanging out. There's my uh, bedroom that overlooks the garden and the uh, and the forest, which is pretty pretty overwhelming. That is the forest. It's pretty incredible. Um, we had some, we have ash tree borer in our area, which is taking out ash trees. So occasionally when it gets really windy, you can see that dead ash right there, which is coming down. It's on the neighbor's side. It can look like it's raining trees. It's pretty hardcore. There's some apples growing. Here's an improved Celeste. This is one of the earliest fig varieties. Again, it's an improved Celeste. If you're growing in the Northeast. Oh, and I have a lot of Smith here, just loaded with figs. I have multiple copies of the best varieties of figs for our area. Multiple copies of Smith, multiple copies of Improved Celeste. I have about nine more inch ground trees in the front yard. And as you can see, I have a few cats. These guys are brothers. That is Rucker, named after Rucker Hauer for the handsomeness and the blonde hair. And that's his brother, Lester. That's a black Madeira KK right there. Hopefully we'll get um, some figs off this guy. So a little fig obsessed. This isn't the ideal setup to, for figs. These are a little crammed, but I just don't have the space up front. I have to set up a drip irrigation. So they're just kind of hanging out here and hoping for the best. Oh, a lot of you have asked about my black lace elderberry. So this is the progress. This is a little inflatable hot tub that we have here. This is the sage, the rosemary, the lemon balm. And this is the black lace elderberry. I have it staked now.
These are Arctic Kiwi, a male and a female. If you're going to plant Arctic Kiwi, you have to have a male and a female plant. Or else you will not get fruit. These are eggplant right here. I have all kinds. I have Rosa Biancas. I have um, Black Beauties. Graffitis. some zucchini I have the tomatoes growing up these these stakes and on the old uh, Patrick Dolan one yard revolution uh, trellises thanks to Patrick if you ever want to learn everything you need to know about no-till backyard gardening making your own compost and growing vegetables in a zone four to whatever climate um, Patrick Dolan is the man I learned so much back in 2012 watching uh, One Yard Revolution and um, John Kohler growing your greens. This is my contorted mulberry, which believe it or not has been pruned. It is totally out of control. I don't even know where to start here. I, I have, um, you can see the sun golds are ripening up. Everything is two weeks behind this year. Swiss chard. Tomato City, the new front of my greenhouse, I used, um, I insulated it, and I used black, um, well I painted it, I stained it black, more fig trees obviously. I used uh, fence posts, um, cedar fence posts from the, uh, from Lowe's. And this is my kitchen garden, remember if you can have a kitchen garden, keep it close to the house and central. And then my kind of idea is put a food forest on either side with your fruit trees. My neighbor, Russ, was kind enough to donate these beautiful blue tomatoes. I think they're called what, Blue Beauties, which makes sense because they are gorgeous. Here we have Swiss chard, tomatoes, cilantro that bolted, onions. This bed was fallow, but I replanted it with arugula. I direct seed. I use the spin farming methods. Curtis uh, Stone, I use that for re I planted, but you can see here, arugula, an escarole, endive. You can just direct seed those. You don't have to waste time growing those in cells. Seed them densely, be done with it, keep them covered until they germinate, and there you go. You'll have more greens than you know what to do with. You end up throwing out more than you actually use, which is a shame, but you can compost them. So, oh, I guess those are crooked net, squ crooked net squash there because I see them. These are starting to fruit the eggplant. I'm using my phone this year. Because I just like, I was going to do this tonight, but I was just like, you know, it's a beautiful morning. Let's do this now. Come this way. More figs. This is my Smith. My older Smith. I love the Smith. Oh, Lester's in the greenhouse. Lester, you need to get out of the greenhouse. So this is my new greenhouse door. You can see my workbench in the back. I'm going to be starting my winter seeds today. Spinach, mosh, claytonia, Swiss chard, kales. For fall, these beds are going to have hoops on them for arugula, endive, escarole. Starting more salad greens because I use them all up. And salad's gross in summer. Even the Salanova stuff that's heat resistant. You don't, you don't really want to start eating. You're so sick of salad after the spring that to keep it in the summer, just pull out your crop, plant arugula right away, and cut it before it bolts, and then replant it. That's how you have greens in the summertime. Oh, you can see my shadow there. Here is um, basil. More eggplant. I was going to um, use the Florida weave on these, but I just didn't get around to it. So I'm just staking them. Here's a zucchini. Zucchini plant right here. You can see cucumbers growing up there. These are butternut squash. I used to grow a ton of squash, but... Not as much anymore. You just end up having too many of them in the fall, and it's like you can only eat so much butternut squash. Which, not to say I don't love butternut squash, but it's so much better when you grow it too. It, 
I don't know why you would think. It's just squash. This is a Santa Rosa plum that I planted here. That's a Wellington mulberry, I think. I'm just kind of letting it get big and it fruits, but I see it as a diversion for the birds. That's what I tell myself. Oh, this is pretty. These are new. These are um, ornamental alliums. I don't know what the name of them is, I forget. That's my sour cherry tree. The birds are all over this thing. I think the birds have set up, you can see birds, there. this beautiful bird right there. I don't know if you can see him. Birds have set up camp. Like this is the place to be. This is flowering lovage. It's a perennial. This is a Gravenstein apple tree, which has yet to fruit because I think I need a pollinator. This is um, a Moonglow pear, which is finally fruited. Be patient. This tree has been in the ground for maybe five to six years, and it is loaded. I should have thinned it more. Branches will be breaking, I guarantee it. Here is my pepperoncino. My more eggplant, more peppers. I'll be making some uh, some of these today. These are my compost bins. I use the geo bins here. Again, great ideas from Patrick Dolan. Oldest compost. I don't know why there's fresh echinacea thrown 